Where's the happiest place on earth and the place where dreams come true? Now the answer's easy. At the Disneyland Resort in California and the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Their famous attractions and sites are spread across six theme parks, two water parks, and a diverse array of restaurants and resort hotels. You may think you know all about these world-renowned family vacation destinations, but we've got a secret. There's a side to these resorts that most visitors don't know about. In the next hour, we'll show you the Disneyland and Walt Disney World resorts like you've never seen and tell you a thing or two that may surprise you. Like, how do you get the keys to the kingdom and walk in Walt's footsteps? How do you drive a real race car? Or get a rare look inside a dream suite or Cinderella's castle? What happens after dark? Or when it's time to get your party on? And what really lurks behind these doors? You're about to enter a world of secrets and surprises as we reveal the undiscovered Walt Disney World and Disneyland. When Walt Disney first dreamed the idea of Disneyland in California, he wanted to create a place for families to come and play together in hopes of making lifelong memories. To say Disneyland was a success would be an understatement. It inspired Walt Disney World in Florida, which grew from a Magic Kingdom into four theme parks with the addition of Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, and Disney's Animal Kingdom. Back at Disneyland, Disney's California Adventure became Disney's sixth U.S. theme park. But theme parks are just one aspect of the Disney experience. There's a lot more that's undiscovered. Until now. According to Tourist Attractions and Parks Magazine, it's believed that people vacationing at the Disney parks could stay for a year and still not be able to do everything that the resorts have to offer. We know, it's hard to resist favorites like the Magic Kingdom's top coaster and screen maker since 1974, Space Mountain, a classic thrill ride through the cosmos, or Disney's Hollywood Studios' rock and roller coaster starring Aerosmith, a mind-blowing 0 to 57 mile an hour launch in 2.8 seconds that hurls you down 3,400 feet of track into two inversions and a corkscrew. And then there's Disney's Animal Kingdom's Expedition Everest, a coaster that takes trekkers into the Himalayas for an unexpected encounter with the mythical Yeti. These coasters pack in more thrills than most people can imagine, but there's a lot more to satisfy any thrill junkie that most Walt Disney World vacationers have no idea about. In fact, you can even build your own coaster and take it out for a spin. Where do you go to make that happen? Right here in Downtown Disney, a waterfront entertainment complex right in the middle of Walt Disney World. That's where you'll find Disney Quest, an indoor theme park that features loads of interactive games done Disney style. Disney Quest is a five floor indoor interactive theme park. We have over 250 arcade games and then eight different interactive attractions. Disney Quest offers pulse racing adventures like a virtual jungle cruise and Pirates of the Caribbean. But the biggest draw without a doubt is Cyberspace Mountain. So at Cyberspace Mountain, you get to create your own roller coaster, build your entire track, and then you get to ride it in an M16 flight simulator. You will get your boarding pass, which you take to one of our kiosks and swipe it. Then you go through a series of steps to create the roller coaster that you want to ride. First, you have three different worlds to choose from, with hundreds of different track designs you can experience. 
and then you get to pick your speed. Are you more easy does it, or do you like to hang on for your life? You will find out what thrill level your coaster is on a level from one to five. Five being the most thrilling. Every time you add a piece of track, you see it appear on screen. From curves to dips, the track pieces vary depending on which world you're in. So once you've created your roller coaster, you will go up to one of our launch bays and hand your card to our navigator, who will swipe your card and bring up your coaster. The Screamin' Riot, thrill level four out of five, you will be going upside down four times. Does that work for you? Okay. They will get you into our simulator, get your restraints checked, get you all set up for your ride, and then off you go. Back in the real world, there are other ways to get your adrenaline pumping. For decades, Disney parks have helped fuel Americans' love affair with their cars. At the Magic Kingdom on opening day, you could drive a two-seater at the Grand Prix Raceway, now called the Indy Speedway, along 2,260 feet of track through a simulated race course. It's a thrill at seven miles an hour for drivers without a license. In March 1999, Epcot raised the speed limit and opened Test Track, an automotive proving ground where guests buckle up for the longest ride in the park's history and, at 65 miles an hour, the fastest. But where do you go if you want to do some real high-speed driving on your own? Located just inside the gates of the Magic Kingdom parking lot, there is a real racetrack, the Walt Disney World Speedway. And even better, they'll let you get out there yourself and drive a real race car. That's right, it's called the Richard Petty Driving Experience. Cars can reach speeds upwards of 145 miles an hour. This supercharged thrill can be experienced as a ride along with one of their professional driving instructors, or if you're feeling brave, you can put the pedal to the metal on your own. Richard Petty Driving Experience is a place where uh, your average race fan could come and drive a race car, and that's pretty unique because uh, a lot of other sports like baseball or football or basketball, you can go in the backyard, shoot some hoops, throw the ball around. There's not many places you can go and drive a race car. And these are authentic Winston Cup style stock cars, so uh, it's the real deal. The real deal from tires to rims to the 98 octane racing fuel. You drive a NASCAR race car at NASCAR speeds around a banked tri-oval track. There's a big difference between driving one of these and driving a fast car on the street. First of all, this is legal, so you can come out here and stretch that right foot out a little bit, but pretty much anybody can drive straight. The hard part is turning. So at the Speedway, amateur drivers, once they're suited up... Okay, Eric, let's go ahead and get you a driving suit. ...get some pro training before they're allowed to get behind the wheel. Morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? Y'all yeah. ready to drive some race cars? Oh, yeah. All right. Turn it off. Belts over the shoulder. Slide the wheel right off. After some instruction in the classroom and hands-on training with safety and care handling modules, it's time to buckle up and see who's got the right stuff. Uh, the feeling of driving one of these race cars, uh, there's no feeling like it. It's unbelievable, you can't describe it. I didn't know a car could perform like this until I got into a race car and he showed me that race cars are a lot different than any car you've ever been in before and it's, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. You know, just about anywhere else you work, you have customers uh, who are unhappy, they complain about different things, but, but uh, my customers are driving race cars and we're basically making dreams come true. 
you may not be able to feel the wind blow through your hair with all that gear on it. That was great. But you won't have that problem at our next undiscovered stop. On a deep blue lagoon, right next to the Magic Kingdom, is the 15th floor Contemporary Resort. Many of its 2,000 rooms look out over a beach that skirts a lagoon behind it. From the dock here, you can rent watercraft and do something that very few guests know about at Walt Disney World. You, step on the boat. you can go parasailing. Trips launch from the docks, and parasailing is so easy to do. Just strap yourself in, and before you know it, you're airborne. kind of think of Disney as just theme parks and roller coasters. You may have parasailed before, but you've never seen views like these. I really like getting to see the Grand Floridian and the Wilderness Lodge and just the expanse of all the parks. Grand Floridian. Soaring 100 feet higher than the Contemporary Resort, you're in the air for 10 minutes and can see for miles. Oh, this is awesome. It wasn't scary at all. I thought it would be, but it wasn't. Just got to float up there and enjoy the view. Perfect landing. We found thrills in virtual space, on land, and in the air. And the next thrilling place we're about to reveal is right in water. Most people don't realize that Walt Disney World is home to two of the world's best water parks, Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach, with relaxing rivers, sunny beaches, shark reefs, and the wildest water slides around. Some of the best kept secrets are at Typhoon Lagoon, a park elaborately themed to look like an island that's been devastated by a typhoon. The backstory for Typhoon Lagoon really is this mysterious geothermal activity that happened. At the same time, there was this enormous typhoon and storm surge that picked up all these boats and aquatic life and shoved it up into the middle of, of central Florida. One of the latest additions to the water park is the first water coaster in Central Florida. It defies gravity, and it's called Crush and Gusher. This is a thrill ride. It twists, it turns, you go up and down. We use a special technology, water jets, that push you along. It is by no means a lazy river. The water jets propel guests through cavernous twists and turns, spitting them out into Hideaway Bay. Each gushing jet nozzle puts out 1,350 gallons per minute, propelling riders through each of the 400-foot slides. That's fast enough to fill an average-sized home pool in about one minute. If that's not enough to give you a gush and crush, you gotta love a water coaster that offers a different ride experience on each flume. There are three different flumes that you can actually ride, each with different twists and turns and bumps. Guests can ride through tropical environments. And when they get to the bottom, they're gonna run right back up to the top to get the different experience. And that's not all you'll find here. Typhoon Lagoon boasts one of the biggest wave pools anywhere. But where do the waves come from? This huge wall behind me has 12 chambers in it that hold about six to 7,000 gallons each. The hydraulics open the doors faster than gravity, actually forcing it down, letting the water come out unrestricted so it hits the bottom here and goes forward and creates that great big wave you see. They can even control the shape and speed of the waves, which is vital in creating that perfect set. But that's not the only secret behind the waves. Did you know that before the park opens, you can actually surf? That's right, you and 25 of your closest friends can book the lagoon just for yourselves in the morning or for the entire night and go for it on your surfboards. It's called a private surf party. In three hours, 100 waves come rolling out, one every 90 seconds. But if you can't surf, don't worry, because you can learn. We have our surfing school here at Typhoon Lagoon. It's a great place to teach people to surf because we can control the entire environment as to when the wave comes out, what size it is, and of course all the sea creatures that don't exist over here that make it so much more easier for people who want to just give it a shot, to give it a try, and relative safety to find out if it's what they want to really do. 
Surf classes are taught right here at the lagoon two to five times a Welcome week. Welcome to Typhoon Lagoon. Y'all ready to surf? Yeah. They last two and a half hours with just 12 students per class. What we do is we teach the basics of surfing. We're just trying to get you to be able to stand up on your feet on a surfboard to say, I did it. Grab the board, do a push up, throw your feet up under you. Now notice her front foot hit. One right of the things when you go on a vacation in Florida, a lot of times you think of the beach and you might think that being in central Florida, you miss that opportunity, but that's the nice thing about having uh, one of the world's you know, most technologically advanced wave pools at Typhoon Lagoon is that it adds another element to making a Disney vacation. You can do just about anything you could possibly do anywhere else at Disney. You don't have to go to the beach to surf. You make things as easy for the student as possible, right down to the special 7 to 10 foot soft sided foam top boards, which are much easier to ride. The popping up on the surfboard is probably the most important thing that we teach on dry land. After that, you get into the water, try to stand up. If you make a few mistakes, we'll actually work with you on that. And pretty soon, we'll have you up and riding waves at Typhoon Lagoon. I was really nervous at first. Once I got in the water, the instructors, they gave me lots of pointers, really made me feel comfortable. And I caught my first wave the first time out. It was great. A cool thing about the surf school is the fact that you get the same perfect wave every time. And you know, you might float around out in the ocean for two hours waiting for that one perfect wave. Who doesn't want to get VIP treatment? Well, get ready to take a VIP tour and learn more undiscovered secrets about Disney parks and resorts. And who better to tell you the inside scoop than a Disney expert tour guide? You can find them at both the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland, and these tours are filled with wonderful park surprises. At Disneyland, you can take the Walk and Waltz Footsteps Tour. Well, the Walk and Waltz Footsteps Tour is an experience that guests can uh, partake in that's additional to what they normally would interact with at Disneyland. It's a historical tour of Disneyland where you get to learn the history and the lore of how Disneyland really came about through the imagination of Walt Disney. With over 20 stops highlighting many Disney milestones, there's plenty to discover for the Disney novice as well as the seasoned Disney buff. It was also going to be a way that Walt Disney could introduce a brand new attraction, the very first tubular track steel roller coaster in the world. Every single roller coaster that's been built since then has used tubular tracking. One stop on the tour gives you a rare glimpse inside one of Disneyland's best kept secrets. It's a private club in the heart of New Orleans Square, reserved for members only. The Club 33 was an idea that came out of the New York World's Fair where every one of the big companies participating had a VIP lounge, if you will. So Walt created a place that you could entertain as the club is for members only, the tour just gets you into the lobby, but our cameras were granted full access for a sneak peek. Hello, welcome to Club 33. Thank you. Right this way, please. Inside, the world looks very different. The Victorian motif complements the New Orleans surroundings. Good afternoon, Dr. Mandel, Mrs. Mandel, how are you today? Hello, Russell. Club 33 opened in May of 1967, and it hasn't changed very much. In fact, some of the artwork was purchased by Walt and Lily Disney. With the exclusivity comes custom cuisine, fine wine, and consummate service. It's the only place in the park that serves alcohol. Separate from the main dining room is a private dining area called the Trophy Room. Perched in the corner is an audio animatronic vulture. It's been silent for years, but back in the day, the bird would converse with guests through microphones hidden in the chandeliers. A lot of people know about it, and a lot of people would like to belong, but it's very difficult to get in. So uh, you have to have a, a lot of endurance in terms of waiting to become a member in the club, but it is a wonderful experience and certainly something that makes a day at Disneyland extremely unique. People ask, why is the 33 Club so secretive? Well, when you have to go back to when Walt Disney was here, it was one place in Disneyland that he could get away from uh, all the people that were down below. 
Another exclusive behind the scenes look takes us right around the corner above the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction to Disneyland's Dream Suite. When Walt was building Disneyland, he built a very small apartment for himself over the firehouse on Main Street. He had a dream later when we were building New Orleans and the Pirates of the Caribbean that he could build himself a bigger suite for not only he, but his family. They had visitors coming in. Walt had watercolor renderings created, but passed away before the suite was realized. After more than 40 years, the suite was completed using those original renderings. This 2,200 square foot luxury apartment comes complete with not one, but two master bedrooms. In one, the Victorian suite has an adjoining jacuzzi. The other suite is themed like Frontierland for the kids. The living room, designed in a French provincial style, reflects the New Orleans square setting. A bayou-themed patio is open to the sky above, and using Disney magic familiar to guests on Pirates of the Caribbean are fireflies that visit nightly. The backstage tour isn't exclusive to Disneyland. In Florida, you can get access to secret areas on the Keys to the Kingdom tour. This half-day experience takes visitors into undiscovered areas all over the park. Here we are at the Haunted Mansion. This attraction, as you take a look at it, looks like it's probably the least taken care of attraction here. In the On Keys to the Kingdom, guests will visit our Parade Production Center, which is where we keep our parade floats. We talk about how the attractions were designed, what the attractions do, some of the secrets of how they work. Also, get a look at the Utilidor, the tunnel system underneath the park. For a truly unique experience, Disney also offers individual VIP tours. With a personal tour guide, you can leave the planning to the experts and save valuable time. That doesn't mean skipping lines, but your VIP guide will give you a helping hand. When you come to Disney and you have a tour guide, you don't have to face the challenge of figuring out the entire park, what happens when, who is where, and everything else that goes on. As, as a parent, you get to enjoy the experience and get to see everything you want to see and not miss anything because you're not trying to figure out somebody else's game. And we were walking past the convection area. Did you happen to smell cotton candy, yeah. candy apples? Excellent. When a guest hires a Walt Disney World VIP tour guide, we act as their walking, talking guide map while they're in the park. So whatever their expectations are, we try and meet them. Gathering their fast passes, getting them to their shows or their restaurants, we try and take care of all that for them so they don't have to think about it. We also use something called a smell it, sir, and that actually blows the fragrance of those products out into the street. So it gives it more authenticity, so it's more mainstream. Well, we offer two types of VIP tours. We have the standard tour and the premium tour. With the premium tour, it's actually a bundled package. It includes a luxury vehicle. It also offers more immediate access to the fast pass attractions. It also allows you to go to multiple parks in one day, so you could leave one park, go to visit another one, and still access their Fast Pass attractions as well. The VIP tours have been around since almost the beginning. Walt Disney himself used to give personal tours at Disneyland to all kinds of VIPs as a special request. When I was a little girl and we came to Disney World, of course at that time it was just the Magic Kingdom, but we always had a VIP tour guide and I was really delighted to find out that the VIP tour services still existed. When we planned our first trip here with our children, it has become a family tradition. It is now. <laughs> yeah, we won't come back without one. We won't. They're terrific. Let's go. But one stop is so exclusive, it's not on any tour, and it's something that only a few people have ever seen. Within the turrets of a princess's castle, right out of a fairy tale, it's the Cinderella Castle Suite. Four stories above the Magic Kingdom, this enchanting suite is inside. That's right, inside the fabled Cinderella Castle. This suite has been done exactly how we think Cinderella would have had it. All the attention to detail, derived from the original castles in France where the, the Cinderella's castle actually, the ideas came from. From the moment you enter, you step into the storybook. Cinderella's pumpkin coach is depicted on the floor using 30,000 tiles, many of them 24 karat gold. And in the bathroom, there's a tub that has a mosaic around it inspired from the ones that every guest gets to see as they pass through the castle downstairs. But this mosaic has fiber optics that can recreate the stars in the night sky. 
Even Cinderella's glass slipper made by Steuben Glass is on display. Along with Disneyland's Dream Suite, Cinderella's Castle Suite is an exclusive once-in-a-lifetime experience. Even if you never have the opportunity to spend the night as a princess in her castle suite, aspiring princesses can still get the fairy tale treatment at the Bippity Boppity Boutique in the castle itself or in the princess room at the downtown Disney Marketplace. At the Bippity Boppity Boutique, girls can become their favorite princess. The experience even calls its stylist fairy godmothers in training. They can do your nails, they can do your hair, they give you the full princess costume right down to the slippers, and it's a really opportunity for the girl to become Cinderella or Aria or whoever, whatever princess she would love to be. Hello, Princess Brittany. It's lovely to meet you. Your very own fairy godmother in training casts special spells to take care of your every wish. The Disney parks have so many attractions and events you might not know about, but part of that might be due to the time of year you plan your vacation. Did you realize that Disney celebrates the seasons with special events? You could come back all four seasons of the year and have a slightly different experience. There will be, whether it be decorations or some attractions are made up special for certain seasons. And that's really unprecedented in the amusement industry. In the spring, Disney's California Adventure at the Disneyland Resort welcomes guests to the Food and Wine Festival with events that include cooking schools, winemaker dinners, over 600 complimentary cooking demonstrations, and much, much more. They bring different food and different wines from around the world, and you can sample those at different stations throughout the park. They bring in experts from around the world, and they have special parties and demonstrations. And at Walt Disney World in Florida, Epcot hosts their food and wine festival during the fall. But to see the park in bloom, the flower and garden festival during the spring is the time to come for a visit. This is when Epcot is filled with a colorful array of flowers and gardens, live music, and interactive events. They have a special concert series. They have these dramatic topiaries, which may not by themselves sound super exciting, but they craft them into Mickey Mouse or Goofy or Pluto. Throughout the celebration, Disney horticulturists conduct seminars, sharing tips and secrets for you to try at home. They may help you grow your roses a little bit brighter or your vegetables a little bit taller. During Halloween, Disney's Haunted Mansion is transformed into a nightmare before Christmas. It's super clever is because basically from as soon as Halloween starts through Christmas, this theming has relevance. And so for a quarter or a third of the year, the Haunted Mansion is really a unique attraction that you don't get the rest of the year. At the Magic Kingdom in Walt Disney World, visitors are treated to Mickey's not-so-scary Halloween party. The not-so-scary is really the clever part because they say is we're going to embrace the kind of the, the soft thrills of Halloween. They're going to do it in a way that the kids don't have to bury their head in mom and dad's arms. They'll look and they'll be, wow, Halloween can be really exciting and fun. The spooktacular party is held on select nights in September and October. There's Halloween fireworks and a specialty themed parade. Even the Headless Horseman makes an appearance. And for the mega Disney seasonal celebration, all Disney parks in California and Florida go all out for Christmas. We come to the parks a lot during the holidays, especially during Christmas time, because it's a very special time of year. The park is beautiful, and it's just part of our family tradition. Even on some nights, they actually have fake snow in the middle of Florida, of all places. They have the Osborne lights over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, one of the brightest light displays you'll find anywhere in the country. They decorate just about every corner at Disneyland, even uh, the classic It's a Small World attraction gets a special Christmas decoration package for the season. But you know, you don't have to wait for the holiday season to celebrate at Disney. Is it your birthday? Or a family reunion? Just married? 
or is it your 50th wedding anniversary? Just ask and Disney will provide memorable ways to make your celebration special. We've shared a lot of secrets about the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts, but there's still more ready to be revealed at the dozens of hotels and over 200 restaurants than you probably realize. Now you can always grab a quick bite when you get hungry. The Disney theme parks serve well over 10 million burgers a year. And for those who are a little more health conscious, you might not know that Disney has options for you too. Knowing that some guests want healthier options, they've started to really incorporate those into their menus, into food stands, into all types of dining options so that you may want to replace your fries with fresh fruit or vegetables. You might replace the soft drink with milk or, a, or some type of juice. And so if you're looking for a snack and you want a healthier option, you can take a, a banana or a pickle as your choice. But for the finest in fine dining decadence, like the best truffles emulsion in the southeast, you have to check out Disney's Grand Floridian Resorts restaurant, Victoria and Albert's. It's the only five diamond restaurant in Central Florida. It's elite, intimate, lavish, and romantic. But here's an even bigger secret. If you're looking for a completely unique dining experience, there's a way to go behind the scenes for an exclusive meal. Victoria and Albert's offers a very special and hidden dinner table known to very few. It's called the chef's table. Disney has all these spectacular dining experiences, but the best without question and my favorite is the chef's table at Victorian Alberts at Disney's Grand Floridian where Chef Scott Hunnell invites you into the kitchen and prepares a special meal just for you. Mr. Bennett, yes. welcome. Hi. Mrs. Thank Bennett, you. welcome to Victorian Alberts. At the start of the evening, the guests are greeted by the maitre d'. They're escorted right here to the kitchen where I am and then they are toured to the chef's table. Good evening. Welcome to the chef's table. How are you tonight? They get to see the full view of the culinary, creating the masterpieces, slicing, dicing, cooking, flambéing, and all that fun stuff that you might see in the kitchen, of course. What I'm gonna do for you, if it's okay with you, is just customize your menu for you this evening. Um, is that okay with all? Absolutely. Is there any allergies or anything you might not enjoy this evening? Actually, seafood is the only thing. Seafood? Be my nemesis. No seafood on the menu tonight, no problem. As the evening progresses, each new course brought to the table is explained personally by the chef himself. Okay, we have some exciting things here and no seafood for you, sir. Okay, we're gonna start with the lady over here. That's the CAB Prime Filet Mignon with a composition of potatoes. And then over here is the Virginia Black Bass roasted uh, Oscar style, so it has a little Dungeness crab and a beautiful little sauce bernays over the bottom. And for the finale, an elegant coffee service and everyone's favorite, dessert. Some of them almost too spectacular to ruin with your fork. Thank you, thank you. Glad you enjoyed everything. Well, I have for you to take home your personalized menus. If you could pass those down. Each and everything that we created for you this evening is on the menu for you. That way you don't have to remember everything you enjoyed. All the Disney resorts have their own unique experiences, but Disney Vacation Club resorts offer special accommodations and amenities. At the Disney Resort in California, the villas at Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa have been added to give Disney Vacation Club members that home away from home feeling. The architecture theme, the design, all really flows extremely well into what the Grand California is, the craftsman style. It also provides guests a different type of option, whereas it's not a traditional hotel room. You have different sized villas, some with kitchenettes or dinettes, so it's just another option in the repertoire for a visitor to Disneyland. The addition of 50 two-bedroom equivalent vacation villas with fully equipped kitchens, living and dining areas, as well as convenient amenities, has made Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa, well, even grander.
But that's not all. Did you know that Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa is also the first Disney hotel where many rooms have views overlooking Disney's California Adventure Park? Um, with that, we have our own entrance. And what a more special way than to stay in a hotel and wake up in the morning and go downstairs and walk right into the park. That's right. It's just steps away from Disney's California Adventure Park. And in Florida, a few well-known hotels have some undiscovered additions too. Disney's Contemporary Resort opened along with the Magic Kingdom Park back in October of 1971. Guests marveled at the resort's unique style and the fact that Disney's monorail traveled right through the main lobby. It was revolutionary, uh, certainly from a modular construction standpoint. It's a steel structure in a unique A-frame format that had all of the rooms that were prefabricated, including all the furniture, and they just slid right into place. In 2009, Disney Vacation Club opened a brand new 15-story curvilinear structure called Bay Lake Tower, adjacent to Disney's contemporary resort. Imagineers worked hard to make sure that its design complemented that of the original resort hotel. There are horizontal lines, there's the color, there's even a cap that works on the top of the resort that are clues that are drawn from the original resort, but yet it, it's unique. It stands on its own. Bay Lake Tower offers 295 two-bedroom equivalent villas that sleep up to nine people. Most villas offer floor-to-ceiling windows that provide panoramic views of the Magic Kingdom Park or Bay Lake. Not to mention what might be the best view of the nightly Magic Kingdom fireworks display. Bay Lake Tower isn't the only new project to reinterpret a classic Disney resort in a whole new way. From 1975 to 2002, treehouse living was a cherished tradition at the Walt Disney World Resort. And in 2009, Disney Vacation Club reopened the treehouse villas at Disney's Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa. As we approach the design and the construction of the new treehouse villas, obviously being in a forested environment is something that was important to keep in its natural state. We built each of these in three pieces, the roof in two, lifted each of the five pieces up over the trees and into place and connected them together. When guests first arrive at the Treehouse Villas, from an exterior standpoint, it will seem the same. What becomes different is the experience when they walk inside. It's a cabin casual interior that gives them a glamping, a glamour camping feel. Right here at the middle of Walt Disney World. The original Treehouse Villas were inspired by the spirit of the Magic Kingdom's Adventureland area and the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. Treehouses are in its sense an adventure, gave the opportunity to do something as different than any hotel could deliver. You can vacation in style at these new accommodations as a member of the Disney Vacation Club. Members also have access to over 500 other destinations around the world. And you probably didn't know that if you're staying in a Walt Disney World Resort Hotel, you can board Disney's complimentary buses for transportation around the Walt Disney World Resort and between Orlando International Airport and your Disney Resort Hotel. Another overlooked advantage for people staying at a Disney hotel is extra magic hours, where each day one theme park opens for extended time beyond the regular park hours. We discovered many hidden treasures at the Disney parks and resorts during the day, but what happens when the sun goes down? The Disneyland and Walt Disney World resorts almost never sleep, so you shouldn't head off to bed too soon. There's a whole world to discover at Disney after dark, because this is when the resorts get their second wind. Weather permitting, there's always a fireworks display to bid farewell to visitors, much like the final bow at the curtain call of any great show. And at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom, those who have enough energy left after a full day of fun and excitement are treated to the Spectro Magic Parade. 
Spectre Magic is an amazing piece of technology. We have over a million lights in this parade. We have fiber optics throughout all the floats. We have over 250,000 points of fiber optic light, which equates to about 30 miles of fiber optic cable throughout the parade. We also have what we call a whirly ball, which is used to travel 360 degrees forward and back almost simultaneously so we can get very close to the guests as they're along the parade route so that we can entertain them directly. Spectro Magic is unlike any other light show in the world. Its design is a moving gallery along a darkened parade route, all set to a moving musical score. Every float in the parade is computer controlled, and the lighting has to stay in synchronization with the music, and the music has to be in synchronization with the underliner that plays down the parade route. So what we do is we send a signal called a DTMF tone, which is digital tone modified frequency. And what, this is the sound that you hear, and every float has a receiver on it, and this was, keeps the parade in sync as it moves down the parade route. That's just the tip of the technical iceberg that makes up Spectro Magic. There's also light spreading thermoplastic, prismatic holographics, electroluminescence, and military lighting developments like Quantex. This was used in fighter planes, and now it's on the wings of dragonflies. The other neat thing we have is what we call flow neon, and it's sound activated. So as the music flows down the street, it activates the lighting on the front of the float. And then the best part is we generate smoke with liquid nitrogen. Few people realize the depth and diversity of the Walt Disney World and Disneyland resorts. From exclusive experiences that take you into the magic, to the rush of driving a real race car, or flying over the Seven Seas Lagoon, there are thrills of all kinds to fill the hours day and night. Walt Disney began an entertainment revolution when he dreamed up his world of family fun and to this day, he still inspires endless opportunities. In the years to come, the Disney parks will continue to change and grow. They'll do their very best to stay ahead of the curve, consistently updating and reinventing themselves so that there will always be an undiscovered Disney to experience. To get started planning your Disney Parks vacation, just click on DisneyParks.com slash fun.